Hi, my name's Tommy and I work at Velocity Tuning. This is our shop car, this is our 2013 F10 M5. It's quite well known within the UK, it holds quite a few records. It, uh, it's had VMAX at 213.9 in 2018, still yet to be beaten. It holds the best times for a stock engine on 100 to 200 kilometers, the best time for 60 to 130 mile an hour on a stock engine. I think it may also hold the, uh, the fastest half a mile time and speed for a F10 M5 overall as well, all on a stock engine. So I only start for uh, um, numerous years and I've developed it and pushed it and uh, learned as I've gone on basically just keep tweaking, tweaking, pushing, trying this, trying that. And this is the product that I've, I've come up with at the end of it. So since I built this car, everybody else has been getting faster and faster. So people have been getting closer to the VMAX record. Um, there's F90 M5s out now. The S55 M3 and M4 boys are going faster and faster. And I haven't really done that much with this car. I was so happy with where it was at. I was really enjoying it. I didn't really feel a need to push on it more. But as these other cars have got faster, I've got to a point with this car where I've either had to uh, retire it and replace it with a, a newer, more modern car, or do some heavy, serious upgrades on it to take it up um, in the power to a, a place where it can produce better results. But for me to do that, a lot of components were right on the edge. So I've had to replace quite a lot to be able to actually do so. So when pushing for more power on this car, you're gonna have to change quite a few bits. And I've got some of them in front of me. So uh, most of the guys that have F10 and fives, they know about the rods. We all know that the rods can be a weakness on some cars. So this is a stock rod and piston. If you see, the rod itself is actually cast, it's not forged. Um, and it's quite skinny as well, it's not, it's not particularly thick there. And they're not really built the same, they're not all the same. So my car for instance runs 1100 newton meters, I've never bent a rod on the car, it's been absolutely fine. Uh, but then other guys have been more unlucky, they've run like 850, 900 newton meters and they've had a rod bend. Um, even people that have got stock cars have had rods bend. So there isn't really any consistency to the, to the rod strength. And although we haven't had no problems with the rod on this, I'm sure if I was to push the power up, I'd really be taking the mic and I'd probably be just wrecking a, a healthy engine. So, we've gone over to this rod. So, this rod's made by a company called Carrillo. Most of you that are into engines and stuff would have probably heard of it. It's got uprated car bolts. Um, and if you look how much wider that is and the fact that it's forged, it's able to handle a ton more torque. You don't really have to worry about this bending up and you get rid of that weakness that is the um, standard rod. The next part with it as well is we are upgrading the pistons. Don't really see too many problems with the pistons to be fair. Um, there have been cases where they've, they've cracked in between the rings. Um, I have myself had problems with uh, an injector failing and, and putting a hole in a piston, but that's because of an injector failure and if that was to happen on this, this one would get damaged also. So the pistons are not that much of a problem, but because we're gonna be pushing more power and because the engine's got to come apart, we're gonna upgrade it anyway. So if you have a look underneath, you can see that it's much stronger. Um, it's, it's, it's more reinforced. Um, and we're gonna be doing things like upgrading the, the pin that goes through the center as well. So the piston and the rod should not be a problem for us anymore. When it comes to the actual block and the, uh, the piston and the rod, we're gonna remain keeping it alicil, so this block will not be sleeved. When it comes to the compression ratio, standard compression is 10 to one. I'm not gonna be dropping the compression any lower. We're gonna keep the compression at 10 to one. And we're basically just trying to mimic the, the setup that the engine already has, but stronger. So in the early days, a lot of them were failing. So most of what we're doing to this is just gonna be trying to prevent having any issues with the bearings, with it spinning a shell, that sort of thing. So when it's going back together, um, things like ACL race bearings are gonna be going inside it to try to eliminate engine failure. Uh, we also plan to port and polish the heads and uh, to help with flow and other things like that as much as possible. So that's, that's the engine side of it. That's, a full zen doesn't really make any extra power. What it does is it allows you to make power without it failing. So going across the rest of the drivetrain, the next weakest point, or I'd say it's probably even weaker in my case because I've made it slip before, but that's the, the clutch. So a standard clutch is normally good for about 850 newton meters. There's aftermarket options available that are much better. So SSP, uh, Southside Performance, they actually make one called a Spec R clutch. 
that is what was in the car. That is good for 1200 newton meters. Um, we have tested that also. So we've had the car to just under 1200 newton meters and that's the point at which it started to slip. So we actually run our car at 1100 newton meters and it's been like that for years and the clutch has been really good. But because of the extra power that we want to push, we wanted to get the billet baskets that they fit installed and we wanted to get the, uh, the extra plates so that it had the extra clamping force above that so we could run more power. Uh, I don't have the spec X with me because it's actually sitting inside the gearbox now. It's already been installed. But for you guys that are interested, this is what a spec R looks like. So this is the inner clutch. So this is the one that controls first, third, fifth and seventh gear. Um, and you basically you've got loads of metal plates and loads of friction plates. And what happens is that the, the torque becomes too much, the plates slip, they burn up, and then you've got a damaged clutch. So fitting one of these allows you to run a lot more power. Or if you're really looking to go crazy, something like a Spec X is going to allow you to run more power over this uh, also. So that's the inner clutch. So what it comes down to with regards to operating the drivetrain and making sure that it can handle the power, forge rods, bigger clutch. The car should pretty much be able to hold on now. We already have upright drive shafts from the drive shaft shop. We have the diff mount braced. We have uprated bolts. So the whole, the whole drivetrain back to the tires is uprated already. We don't really need to worry about that so much. Um, the other limitation that we have is fueling. So if you have a stock engine, stock turbos, the fueling system sort of dies out around 24 PSI. It might get to 25 PSI on some, but what's called the high pressure fuel pumps, they begin to crash. For us to get around that, on most cars we fit water methanol. Once you've got the water meth system in, you can push tons, tons more PSI of boost. Uh, on this car here, because we're gonna be running bigger turbos and we wanna run more ignition timing, we're, we're still gonna max out that standard fuel system even with the water meth installed. We could uh, put on bigger nozzles, a bigger water meth pump. We could make the water meth system itself upgraded, but that's not something that I want to do. In case there's a problem with the water meth system, I then literally have the actual OEM system accounting for such a, a small amount of fuel that this is just gonna knock and damage the engine straight away. So there's other options on the table. When it comes to that, you uh, you have a, a pork fueling system, which uh, a company called Fuel It make. So you are actually pumping fuel in still, but it's it's pork instead of through the injectors. Another option you have is to fit F90 fuel pumps, or you can go with an aftermarket fuel pump. So that's what we've done there. I'll show you guys this properly in a second, but this one's made by Sport. So as I said, I want the direct injection. I want it fed to each cylinder um, evenly. I don't want to have to worry about a secondary system failing on the car. So for that reason, it really left me with the options of upgrading the high pressure fuel pumps. I had the F90 pump available to me or this spool pump. I actually have an F90 pump here and I'm going to be doing another video um, talking about the install of this and talking about the pumps. But the reason why I've gone for the spool pump over the F90 is that uh, the injectors themselves are rated to 250 bar. The F90 pump's rated to 350 bar, and the OEM um, high pressure fuel pump's rated to 200 bar. So you fit the F90 pump, you can run an extra 50 bar of pressure, um, and then after that, you, you basically max out the injectors, you're gonna damage the injectors. Also, when you're changing gear, or if you have a build up of pressure over um, the 250 bar for the injectors, the F90 fuel pump's not going to release because it's set at 350 bar. So, they, they're good for power, but I believe this will be better for power and I believe it's safer. So these are rated at 250 bar, same as the uh, injectors, but they flow a lot more. So it's not about pressure with these, it's about the actual flow. And one way of showing this is these are the fuel lines. So it, it flows that much more that you can't actually use the OEM fuel lines. The fuel lines in comparison to this are probably like a third of the size, they're much, much smaller. Um, and this hits plug and play. Or with the F91, you're going to have to change the connectors, you have to fit uh, different gas seats, got to bend the pipes up out of the way. This kit should just be a, a, a lot smoother for us, it should be more capable, and it's also got things like off um, ethanol content um, monitor. So you can look on a phone app and it'll tell you how much ethanol is in there, and you can adjust it to suit. So that is a breakdown of the parts. Um, very soon we will be getting the crank balance to suit for the new weight of these. These are actually lighter than OEM by the way. They um, don't feel much lighter, but they, they are lighter than OEM, so there's less rotational mass. So we get the crank balance, we get the engine built up, and then it's not going to be any time soon, but probably within the next few months, we'll have these engines switched around. 
and uh, we'll be posting up lots on the development. If there's any questions that you guys have got, please let me know. Uh, for some of you, this video is probably going to be pretty boring because I'm, I'm going more on the technical side of things. But I think it's important. A lot of guys out there, they don't know how much torque can it run. Okay, when the fuel system going to die? Um, why are you fitting these rods? Why are you fitting those pistons? So they're the um, questions that I'm trying to answer in this video. There are still some unknowns. Uh, it's going to take a long time for me to get this developed and working right. So setting up these fuel pumps, that could just be like that, or it could be hard work when I get my new turbos on. That could be like that, or it could be hard work. I could have other hardware issues. I could have engine issues. I could have lots and lots of different things happen as I start to progress with this build. So that's why at the moment, I've just got everything laid out in front of me. I'm trying to plan everything. And instead of just picking these pistons and rods and that fuel pump there, and oh, I might just bang those turbos on. I'm trying to build everything to suit and everything to work together. Uh, in, my, in my head, I've got an idea on boost. I've got an idea of the fueling that I want to be running. I've got an idea of the sort of ignition timing that I might need to get the times and the power that I want. And that's why I've looked at things like the clutches and, and, and the rods and the, and the fuel pump to make sure that once this engine's built or once I have these turbos, that I don't find that I've actually got another weak area. It is possible that I may find weak areas that I currently do not know about, but I'm hoping that pretty much most of this setup and most of this build is actually sitting here ready to go.